Yo, this is Redman in the building. This is JCO. And you're listening to the back of the motherfucking class. Thousand volts in the building. Podcast, bitch. Bitch. What up? Welcome to another episode of the Back of the Class podcast. We are your hosts. I am the Esteban Serrano. Juanca David. I'm Zach Dion. And we got a dope interview, as you guys have already heard, a little uh, drop from 1,000 volts. Yeah. But uh, Redman and JCO are on the podcast, so we're um, going to get into that interview. Also, we got to talk about the Billboard Awards, specifically just Meek yeah, Mill just, beating just everybody in the Just game. like with the Grammys, just the rap. Just yeah, that, man. just that. We got to talk about that. Uh, Jay-Z verse has surfaced. Another title exclusive, all the way up remix. Got to talk about that. Uh, it's halftime on the Game of Thrones. Yeah, word. So we're gonna go, you know, go through what's going on in the season so far. And X Men is coming out. Word. Juan I saw it has last already week. seen it, and uh-huh. we just interviewed the cast Today. of X Men, and he was super nerding out in this interview. So it's gonna be good yeah. stuff. You have so, to. Yeah, of course. Right. You know. At what point are we gonna be exclusive to fucking title? Because I feel like. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> look, 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 look. We're gonna get into this right now. First and foremost, while on house arrest, oh. my man Meek won rap album. Of the year, what, what do they call the Billboard uh, category? They call Name it top, is weird. top rap album, top, top boy, top of the top. chart. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Meek dreams worth more than money beat uh, Drake. If you're reading this too late, Drake and Future, what a time to be alive. Dr. Dre, Compton, and dreams worth mo- more than money beat to Pimp a Butterfly by Kendrick Lamar. So, I mean, I don't I, see what the mix problem it up. is. No, no, no I'm sorry. It if it sounds if amazing, the grab, if to anyone me. questions any credibility that the Grammys have on hip hop. Billboard just fucking hit a new one. <laughs> That's hysterical. For that album, and I'm not saying it was a bad album because it wasn't. It was all right. But for it to be Kendrick, two Drake albums. Wait, in the same now where would you, Juan? Where would you in rank Compton. this album? It just in that. Oh yeah. If it's not number oh, one, where are you ranking? It? I feel like if it, I feel like in 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 that category with those names, I think it's a, in the in the outside looking in. It's Dead in, last. It's at least in the top three. What? I, I, well, you know what? Oh, yeah, what album maybe. is it better than, than Zach? I didn't listen to Compton enough. And it's not better um, than Compton. But I liked it a lot. <laughs> I I did. Did. And it's not better I than I was Compton. literally on iTunes today looking like, right. should I buy that thing? Because I don't I have Apple it. Music. I bought it the day it came out. I yeah, bought it. I want to go back to it. But, um, I mean, it's better than What a Time to Be Alive. Listen, man. Uh, it might be better than if you're reading this, it's too late. That's something I was thinking about I agree last with year is that it's a kind of a better album. I right. agree it's better than the Drake Future project. I thought... Project was not that great. Well, but we like all we all agree this, unanimously that it is not the top uh, rap album of the year. Oh no, by any uh, means. Right. Yeah, but I would now, love to know how they rate how because I know their their rating system is different. It's not a committee. It's like is it numbers or it, it can't, can't possibly be. Be. exactly it can't be right. <laughs> Here's my thing, right? So yeah. being an insider, being you know in music television, we know um, how a lot of these. Uh, award shows work. Mm-hmm. Sorry to spoil it for you guys, but a lot of <laughs> times it's based on who's actually going to show up to awards, yep. yeah. what label affiliation we have, yeah. what publicist reps certain people. Like, behind the scenes, man, to a lot of these award shows, not not the Grammys, not the AMAs maybe, but like especially network and or magazine press outlet specific yeah. uh, award shows, it really ain't about the music. Yep. It's more about the event. A lot mm-hmm. of money is mm-hmm. made. I mean, I worked the Billboard Awards this weekend for Fuse, and they had the magenta carpet, which is clearly the a T-Mobile. Fuck is that? The colors of T-Mobile. Oh, my Lord. We were at the T-Mobile arena. Uh-huh. Like, you know, there's a lot of money the that was made. Magenta carpet. On, you know what I mean? Like, so you think Meek Mill was greasing some palms? I don't think Meek Mill was greasing some palms. But <laughs> what I'm saying is, like, some <laughs> sometimes you can understand. Like, I remember when I was watching uh, the the movie awards, the MTV movie awards. Being a Viacom employee at the time, anytime there was a, um, a MTV movie up for an award, guess who won? Uh-huh. Hello, like, come on, <laughs> these are clearly. They these they don't like having people win and not be there. They don't and want. What they I'm don't want to do via but satellite is on like back house in the day. So like when when I was going through all of these different that wasn't things, televised either. It wasn't of televised. Right. 
he wouldn't have been there to a, he wasn't a presenter mm. he wasn't a performer so i'm like where how what i'm so confused yeah i don't there's no rhyme or reason in my opinion why this won so i would really love to know what the, the only thing is. i can think of is just to go against the trend <laughs> I mean, I mean, to get us talking, you maybe? don't want to be yeah. saying Your six months later that Kendrick's album was the best of the year. You Do know? you think they did it specifically to get us talking? Oh, maybe. Well, also, it could be like, well, Kendrick got a Grammys. Drake is on top of the world. Yeah, but they're not out there to like give charity, you know? So I know, all but I can it's think of is just to look, man, I'm trying to make sense of this. <laughs> right, nonsense, and that's what right? I was, that's now, all I'm doing. Is Billboard the outlet that l- earlier? Uh, in the year, or maybe it was even last year, that they listed the top ten rappers of all time, and Tupac wasn't in it. Was that a Billboard um article? I don't think it was. Yeah, there was that. Was it top? Was it? It was Tupac that got left out. It was. It was the Billboard list. It was the Billboard list, but I just couldn't yes, remember who got so left. It was Tupac. Uh, Billboard, not really the most hip hop. Uh, uh, in uh, I can't even think of the Entity. word. I'm so. Experience. Baffled, man. Establishment. Credible? Hip-hop credible. Hip-hop credible. Mm. They ain't got no cred out here in these streets. Cred. Hey, well, I, I like the Meek Mill album, so... Listen, I like sure. the Meek Mill I album. Didn't, yeah, sure. I didn't dislike it either, but to win top rap album yeah. is... Against those against albums. Those, I guess if it was against... You know, I would Come get if it was on. against, you know... You know what's great, too, is like that was right when the... That was why the Drake and Meek Mill beef got kicked off because he because Drake didn't fucking tweet a link yeah. to Meek Mill's album. Right. But it's the most petty shit the in the world. Dra- yeah. The verse that Drake has on that album on the song Rico is like one of the best he's done in a long time. It's so clever. You mean so the one good. that Quentin Miller did on? Right, exactly. Yeah. So that's like it was it was such a good verse. Word. It was like too good and then it got called out for that. And right. now everybody's like, oh the views is re- like you shouldn't have got rid of the ghostwriting team for views basically. Well, listen, let's go to another really great verse. Yeah. And that is this Jay-Z verse. Definitely better than pop style. Dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Definitely better Maybe than the, two, why this one's than so the good. two lines. Because he's probably the last thing we heard was that verse, and everybody was like, eh. Now, do you think, do you think at all that a pop style one and a half bar appearance, kind of the uproar that happened thereafter, had anything to do with how hard he came on this verse, because I am not a Jay Z well, fan. Well, f- first of all, for people who don't and this know, verse is set, Ill. set it up. Who did? Who all did right, you so do this with? what is it? Another title exclusive. I'm, you know, I'm telling Jesus you, title. Christ, my subscription to title is probably the best uh, idea I had all year. But anyway, I like it, but I love um, it exclusively available on title is the all the way up <laughs> Fat Joe and Remy Ma remix, mm-hmm. and it features none other than Jay Z. Who is rapping a 16 bar verse, Mm -hmm. not a bar and a half feature. Not only that, the verse is laced Mm -hmm. line for line. I'm I'm gonna quote Konichiwa lyric for lyric, (laughs) come. Dude. If you don't know what that is, please. You gotta listen to Konichiwa. Anyway, he kills this verse. Do we care if he wrote it or not? I mean, you know, it's so good, I don't care. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, nah, I don't. That's I love Juan, man. Juan is such, <laughs> such. I'm just saying. You oh, so. Oh. I like how he showed that he wrote this like in the last couple weeks, you know, because he's yes. talking about lemonade on there. He's talking yes. about Prince dying. Yes. Um, with an elevator reference that could just be about the Ooh. fact that Prince died in the elevator, or that the you know biggest no moment in Jay Z's history of the last ten years. I happened had no in idea elevator. he died in an elevator. Huh? Yeah, man. Yeah. I learned something new. I listened to that that, uh, that verse. I did not know Prince yeah. died in an elevator. Yeah. Damn sure. Shout out to my homie Stain Tack, who is a Rockefeller aficionado. Mm-hmm. Was a part of the uh, the team there. Uh, years back, but he is always the first person that I reach out to for you know these types of moments mm-hmm. because his insight is so crazy. Like he so literally broke down every bar, <laughs> and like once once you really sit with this verse and you hear that he's talking about lemonade and you know you know when my when you you Ooh, know you lemonade. made it when your marriage is making millions like. Yeah. That you Ooh, come those on those M's. You just come really on, man. Woke me up to those M's, dude. And good. then you talk about he's talking about you know 
He's talking about success, and you know, Juan is upset. He's like, I've heard this already. It's Jay Z. Well, yeah, I felt the same way. You know, I'm I felt just the like, same dude, way. I've that, heard you reference regard. your penthouse like twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Magna Carta had fucking uh, thirty penthouse. And the do say, come on. And the yeah, Grammys. like I, I get it. Got twenty two. Well, I I like it more than not, but topically, yeah. No, I I appreciate the right. wordplay, um, the when structure of it, like the elevator, that yes. those lines just you know come they're they're, they're fucking incredible to show how good he is when he's putting words together. But when I hear penthouse this and the money shit on top of the world with my wife shit, like, I've heard all that shit before. Yeah. And I get it. That's where he is. What else is he going to rap about? I totally get it. But as a listener, you're just like, okay. I mean, why don't you talk about, like, marital problems? I don't know. Like, talk about the day your we fucking fandom to- wasn't there on time or some <laughs> shit. We don't want to hear I, first world well, problems. I don't want to hear Jay-Z. about your fucking penthouse I've heard yeah. about a million but times. But it's just the way, it's just the picture that he painted. And that's and that's all great. With it, bro. That's all great. When he the talks about Blue Ivy too, looking like Tupac in the tub. Yeah. No, it's, it's good shit. Woo! And I'm not a Jay-Z fan, bro. I don't really care for Jay most of the time. Like, but this verse, dude. But Prince left his masters in good hands. Like, can we talk about how this shit starts with a French verse that just? Can yeah. we not talk about French Montana? Is <laughs> that horrible. shit like precipitate? Like it just just yeah. Pits. It's it it's, it's so it starts out and you're like, oh, I don't know if this is the best song to. Does do you guys see any rhyme or reason to the songs that he decides to come out on? Like I I'm. I'm well, here's yeah, the thing. It is weird. So the first, po- I had uh, the reason I reached out to my homie Stang was because I couldn't decipher what Jay Z's first like couple lines are mm-hmm. when he's like, it sounded to me like Bleak's on the phone like a crackhead, and I'm like, <laughs> what <laughs> did he just say? Yeah. But he broke it down and basically said that Fat Joe ran into Bleak in Miami and got was like, yo, get Jay on the phone. We got to record it. And I know that mm-hmm. they recorded. Um, Fat Joe and Remy recorded the album in my in Miami. So he reached out and asked for Jay to be on the record. And so that little intro. That's all love, you have to do. I love do how is, Meek is still the intermediary for no, getting in bleak. contact with Bleak, whatever. Bleak and Meek. Yeah. <laughs> bleak sorry. Mill. A lot of Bleaks and Meeks. Yeah, I love man. how Bleak is still the intermediary between Jay and yeah. everyone. And anyone. Else. Yeah. It's just I wonder if he's getting hit up like that a lot or if it's just like, hey, yeah, nobody's asked me to rap for them for like six months. I'll do it. <laughs> do you think Bleak calls and then Jay's like, here we go. Who wants me on the verse? And it's just like Bleak. Like, nah. I, I just want to talk. I think Bleak is <laughs> I think Bleak is smart enough. And you got also, also got to understand, like, Rick Ross is Rick Ross because of Memphis Bleak. Memphis Bleak yeah. brought Rick Ross to Jay-Z. Mm-hmm. He was in that so video, the he, Brown Hair video. And that's right. the one person you can pretty much always count on having a Jay-V- Jay-Z verse nowadays. Right, exactly. So I feel like Bleak has, between that and between all the early Rockefeller, has has uh, has built up enough cred with mm-hmm. Jay that he can always you yeah, know, get that one. phone call. But he, I'm sure Bleak also understands. It's like, I'm not going to run everything by Jay. But when I run it by him... Of it's course, yeah. Be you can't cry wolf, it. and then yeah. And I feel like this this was worth it. They probably got like a bat phone where it's just oh yeah, it's the oh, bleak phone. Or right, everybody stop bleak is online. Right, wait, wait. And then it's like, who you got for me? What, what you want me to jump on? It's like, hey man, say say what up. You know, just want to talk. <laughs> I feel like bleak is one of those characters who've been dismissed a lot, but I feel like you know he's one of. Like, his story is way more interesting than a lot of us yeah. care to think mm-hmm. it is in terms of his contribution. And he was hot for, like, there was a good pocket. It wasn't a long pocket right. of time right. where he was fucking hot right. as fuck. And might be the weirdest show I've ever said, but best I've never seen anybody rock of backwards fitted better than Memphis Blue. <laughs> <laughs> to this day. All right. I watch old videos and I'm like, damn, nobody rocks that fitted better than Bleak. Wow. Straight up. That's Taking hysterical, a man. Shout out to Bleak's back backward fitted His game. Backward fitted game is fucking focused as shit. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm just saying. Yo. Shout out to Bleak for that. All right. But I mean, you know, do do we all agree this is a this is a great Jay Z verse? Did it make you want more no, Jay Z? No, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, he's he's got to set up the summer somehow if he's gonna do something. That's True. Interesting, so. Zach. Because Jay Z is notorious for owning summers. Yeah, but he hasn't in a couple summers though. Yeah, it's been a while. But sheesh, and I feel like this is a great post lemonade statement. Yeah, very it, very quick and to the point. Yeah, and just like acknowgeling it, but not acknowledging <laughs> yeah. it. 
but you know, people were coming coming at him for a while, and he was you know obviously quiet because Jay Z is quiet. But sonically, when when it makes sense for him to say something, yeah, to make this statement, I think is great. But I'm not signing back up for title for a Jay Z verse, and I like title, and right. I will sign. I I kind of see myself like having it for a month here and there sometimes, right. Um, and then I'll watch all those concert videos that I was talking about that I like. Yeah. Um, take a pause from like the YouTube stuff. But yeah, come on. Yeah, who's who's going to sign up for Still Tyler haven't for done it. it. Here's the last thing that I, I need to say about this as well. Um, Fat Joe's verse is not dismissible. No, yeah. dude, I'm telling Fat you. Fat Joe's verse. He supr- like, there's some times where you kind of put him to the side a little bit, Fat Joe, and just go like, oh, you know, the commercial shit, you know, lean back and all that, New York and all that good shit. But sometimes he'll drop a verse, he'll be like, hold up, rewind that? Let me listen to that again. Yes. And I told him when when he was here and we interviewed him, I told him uh, his verse on, he had a song on Big L's song back in the day called Harlow's Finest. Yep. Or no, no, The Enemy, I'm sorry, The the Enemy. His verse on L's, I don't know whose song it is, but they're both on a song, Fat Joe's fucking verse is incredible, and, and that's I told a big him, L, and that's record. a big L record. And I told him when he was like, "Dude, that is the be- one of the best verses I've ever heard. A- I've ever heard anyone spit. Right. Period. Right. If you haven't ever listened to it, listen to it. It's called The Enemy. If right. you have, go listen to that shit again <laughs> and know that we're not fucking around. Like Fat Joe Yo. will fucking rap his ass off, dude. Some of the some of the the mention it, some some of the things that he mentions even in that verse you know about big pun and, and you know it, it be about his independence you know k- kind of about you know his career those are bars man those are stats and mm-hmm. then you got Remy closing out the record and she like she she's never disappointed me ever mm-hmm. as an MC she's the only one who gets overlooked I feel but like, like yo. How can you overlook this girl? Like she's such a monster. She's her flow changes three times in this verse. Mm-hmm. At one moment, she's talking about how chicks chicks ain't really saying nothing and they stole my style and I'm taking it back. And then there's a cadence in there that sounds like a Nikki mm-hmm. cadence. But my favorite thing about her listen. is that I knew that's what you're gonna say. She's the only one kind of I could think of right now who still has that. I'm. Um, an authoritative female rapping because mm. Nikki's still here's my ass on the cover of this album. Right. I'm gonna, you know, I'm still doing this and then that <laughs> <other> <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> yeah. But like Remy's still rapping like she's always rapped, mm-hmm. and but she's still that author- you know how little Kim used to rap that, uh, that vo- like yes. Foxy that it's authoritative voice. Yeah, yeah. That's what she brings, and I love that shit. Yeah, man. So kudos to her, and she's a sweetheart because we met her that day too, and she Word. was super cool. All right. Yeah, man. I mean, only only one where only one place to here, go after that, and that's straight into this. Oh, I thought 1, you were gonna make it all the way up, fucking joke. Oh, I was like, I was warming up, so I was like, here it comes. Yeah, I, I, I dropped the ball. I, I on threw that. the alley oop, <laughs> and it just went straight out of bounds. <laughs> so anyway, we had a thousand volts, which is Redman and JCO come mm-hmm. in. To the office, um, and you know we had a, a, a pretty interesting conversation. Very yeah. interesting. Um, you know the two of them have joined forces to do kind of an EDM hip hop ish album. We'll let you, you know, we'll let them rather explain it. But I was, I must warn you first that if you hear a lot of munching <laughs> and chewing and <laughs> smacking, yeah, Redman was Redman was, was hungry as a hostage, and all we had. <laughs> Was the was the cashews in Zach's drawer? Word. Peanuts, peanuts, peanuts. You're gonna hear him talk about it, I dude. Think. Yeah. <laughs> he, so if you hear, but it's just so yourself. it's so red man, and you're like, and if you listen to it, you're like, yeah, red man would do some shit like that, right? Yeah, it makes sense. I gestured for him to come up on the mic one time, and then I was just like, forget it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I fixed all of that. Thank all right, God. All right, thank, thank God for yeah. for for you guys are in the Pro deluxe Rex. Esteban Word. THX remix. <laughs> So check it out right now. I was one of those dudes in the back of the class. Yeah, that's who we were. (laughs) Not paying no attention, just talking shit. Exactly. All right, so we all still graduated. So we're all on the same wave. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, So you guys are one thousand volts together. Thousand volts, right? Tracy on Red Man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just put out your first song. Yes. I'm gone. Featuring uh, Trade the Truth. Yeah. Trade the Truth. Mm First single off the project, but not the first record we've done. We actually right. did a song called Turn Me Up Some, which came out last year. Um, 
which kind of sparked this whole, you know, working relationship with me and Red. And, uh, you know, after that song did its thing and kind of sparked a lot of interest, we were like, let's just start working on shit. And we just vibed and started making a lot of different songs and ideas. And we're like, fuck it, let's, let's make a project. Let's make a group out of it. Because beyond the music we're making, our, our live show, just how Red performs and, mm-hmm. and how I perform as a DJ, and when we combine that between the, the real hip hop shit, the electronic music, and, yeah. and I come from real hip hop, like that's how I started DJing. Now I'm producing more electronic music, but like I'm a hip hop head. Cool. You know, like I, can, I grew up on Red Man, so like it's a and dream. And you had him on your song first. Yeah. Before you started the shit together. Yeah. Which is crazy. <laughs> it's, it's, all a, it's all a dream come true. And, uh, you know, we got a lot of songs that, that we're working on right now. You know, I'm Gone's the first one to really hit the airwaves for 1,000 mm-hmm. volts, but there's a lot more cooking yeah. right now. Is it weird because um, when these kind of EDM rap hip-hop pairings happen, the rapper kind of can take a back seat more? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm thinking of Turned Out for what? Like, yeah. Lil John's on there with about eight words. Right. What's it like? Well, that I mean, that's or what Nikki we're working on. You know what? Uh, I'm learning Augusta, the platform of EDM music and how it's set up as far as me just not just going in writing 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 like i would do hip-hop like i would mm-hmm. write three verses yeah. where to this i don't have to i can write a good verse and jay would take the words and chop up something mm-hmm. and make a hook which would make it easier and um but my whole thing is i, I still want a hip a, a hip-hop feel mm-hmm. with with the edm feel but I want to be more aggressive with it. Like we're gonna get more aggressive. Mm-hmm. Like we we wanna we. I don't think we've really found our our perfect niche. What we're going for. That's why we're still working right now. Mm-hmm. Cause like all this is like spontaneous. Like you know mm-hmm. we just like yo we doing an album and you know Jay put all this together the promo and now as I've been learning from him when I sit in the studio with him, like the platform is different. So from a production standpoint, I know that you know Red, you like to work with like certain producers. I remember there was a secret ill mind project that was like that was coming out. I know, you know, early on it was it, it wasn't a lot of producers from all over the place. So sonically is are you doing all the production on this album? Yeah, I'm I'm doing all the production on the album and I'm also collaborating with a, a bunch of other producers on certain records um to just kind of bring new life like me as a producer like I love to collaborate cuz um you know, two ears are better than one and it's like you know, people bring me ideas, and I'm like, oh, if we flip it like this and that, and like, and I'll have an idea for Red on something. Mm-hmm. So like, we have some big collabs with other producers that mm-hmm. I, I can't say yet. Can't say them. Some Work. big like A list EDMs. All right. Stars. Nice. All right. And then um, you know, on the vocal tip, I know we're gonna call in some of uh, some Red favors All on right. some of the OGs. <laughs> get them, get them on there, and uh, you know, it's gonna be a really interesting project sonically, and just like be a. It's gonna be a fucking wild ride. Now, Red, how how um, how far out are you getting, like, with your part lyrically? Because I, when I think of like the the most kind of out of the box Red Man, mm-hmm. I'm thinking uh, Christina Aguilera, Dirty. Mm-hmm. But that was still mm-hmm. very very Red Man. Mm-hmm. Like, are you kind of like you know going somewhere else lyrically, or is it straight lyrical hip hop? Um. You know, you, if you eat too many peanuts, <laughs> they can fuck your stomach up, yo. And like, you is that like, a, is that like a, know, right? That's what you're rapping about? Yeah. Peanut rap? Like, yo, I, is that like a thing for real? Yeah, man. I fucking was... <laughs> flying, I was flying back from overseas, man, and I ate too many peanuts, man. I could not fucking use the bathroom, man. Wow. Well, yo, it felt like a fucking tugboat was trying to come out my ass because I had so much peanut cluster in my stomach with no vegetables to make... You need the rum. You gotta get bro. vegetables. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Overall, with the rum, back to your question, brother. Um, <laughs> Are you still going in on the peanuts, Yeah, I know, because I'm hungry as a motherfucker, man. Y'all ain't got no little bodega up here. I can get a sandwich no. or nothing oh, yeah, from right quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, when I get the beats now, I'm trying to tailor it. Mm. Tell her it the right way. Mm. Even though it might just be a verse. I ain't got to write like three verses. Right. I'm going to still tell her that one verse. Give it a subject. That way he could take something out of it and we make it a song. Mm-hmm. That's what it's about. Um, and I'm going to still push the pin. The same way yeah. I'm going to go just go as hard as I do in hip hop because nothing's light, you know. Like, it's, it's just about learning different platforms how to work it, you know. Yeah, like we're we're in the studio working together. Well, you know, I'll be working on a beat, Red'll be writing, mm-hmm. then it'll go, 
you know, do a first take on like what he would do, you know, naturally. And then I would like, and I come up with what I, how I picture that same verse, even those exact words, just like in certain ways to fit within the beat, make mm. potentially a different way. Mm. Cause it, we may be trying to get a different feeling or emotion out of like that moment in the song or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's just even like, you know, the classic red man barks. I'm like, yo, do do these wolves like that. Mm -hmm. He might be getting yeah. mad at me. Like, yo, yeah, tell exactly. me how to work like that. Punching goddamn wolves up. I'm like, I'm like, I need the, I need the monkey. Ooh, I'm ooh, like, ooh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh man. So but, uh, we, yeah, no, it's, it's a blast when we're in the studio. We just man. burn it down and just get creative and make make good music, man. It's cool. It's cool. Is there anybody out there going right now, hip hop or EDM, uh, who's inspiring you guys? Who you're like, damn, we gotta, no, we gotta keep up. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> that was cut and dry. No, really, it was not. It was, I mean, like I said, I, I mean, I ain't say it, but <laughs> as I look, as I look out there, I hear a couple of guys that splashing around with yeah. it, mm -hmm. but nothing serious. Yeah. Not at the magnitude I want to take it. Like I really want to rock. Like I want to rock. I, I want to. I want motherfuckers in my hood to be like, yo, that shit is hard. Just like everybody is like with this record, I'm going. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's a beat that moves like hip hop, but yeah. it's still, yeah. you know, EDM is live sound. electronic yeah. sound, and motherfuckers is feeling that shit. Like mm -hmm. they feeling that that vibe, and I, I think that vibe, that vibe right there is what people want to hear. Like it's in the vibe of. The other one, the boom, 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 boom. <laughs> that lights out. Joint. Yeah, yeah, the lights yeah. out joint. It, uh, it's in. I th people like that vibe yeah. from us, so I think yeah. that's something that we should feed off yeah. on as well. Mm -hmm. For sure, and like I'm, you know, I'm constantly inspired production-wise by a lot of different artists, but I think Thousand Volts is going to be a lane of its own. You know, there's a lot of people who try and do like rap, mm -hmm. electronic mm -hmm. shit, but like. Electronic producers can't DJ like me, and all these mm. rappers can't rap like Red. Yeah. Right. So like the shit we're gonna yeah. do is just like, it's gonna be like some undeniable shit. So we gotta spread the word around thousand volts, but yes, also Red. What else do you have going on? I heard something about How High Two. How High Two is uh, it's being written. Yeah. Universal uh, opened the door back up. Um, got two writers that's writing it right now. Hopefully by the end of the year. We hear some word on it, uh, like when the script would be finished, but it was all political. But it's in the works, though. All right, thanks again to uh, JCO and Red Man for coming through. Yeah, thank you. Blessing the podcast. I can't wait to hear what what this sounds like. And then, of course, yeah. ultimately see what it yeah, looks like. Yeah, I've heard like. the first song, and I love it. Yeah. I'm more, I want to hear, like, the EDM-inspired stuff yes. more than... Mm -hmm. Cause like he said, like the first one is the one that sounds like hip hop. Right. Cause we want to appeal to that first to bring you into the other, you know, yeah. um, detour stuff that we're doing. That's not your conventional hip hop. So I'm looking forward to hearing that. Can't so, wait. Yeah. Cool. So, Game of Thrones. Hit it's, it. It's all. It's, it's always sad when it gets like episode four, episode uh, five. Cause you're just like, shit, man. And this season Pretty is soon. so good. Yeah, yeah. so good. And Can I like, just vent for a second? Yeah. Hit it. I didn't watch it as it was happening because, uh -huh. so, you know, sun on Sundays I'm conflicted because a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. And especially this Sunday, there was Preacher, there was mm -hmm. Game of Thrones, and mm -hmm. there was a wrestling pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. And as a nerd, I'm like, fuck, I got to pick one of these. I can't go back and forth. <laughs> as a nerd. And of course, I picked wrestling because <laughs> that's just what sport, I do. Like, but like, you know, I DVR Game of Thrones. I watched it right after wrestling. Dude, you cannot follow another form of media and... Expect to not get like you know what I'm saying like oh, you so can't, I'm watching yeah. wrestling you right and I'm and I'm following two people who tweet the the, the event mm -hmm. and their opinions and you just can't do you can't follow multiple things because no, you know you how many gotta, do you know yeah. how many hold the door statuses I got before I watched the episode <laughs> because apparently people can't watch a show and not oh, tweet yeah. or uh -huh. Facebook about it without the shit being over for ten minutes yeah. oh my god yeah, and it, and then and then they'll argue how is that a spoiler I'm like it, do you think How we're fucking morons that we can't put hold the door right. and hold door together? Yeah. Right. Like, are you that fucking dense? Come on, man. I, do that, I it drove cover, me insane. Yeah, I had to cover the Billboard Music Awards, and I was like, if I can make it, I'll watch after, and I just couldn't. So I you watched half of it on the train on the way in on my phone because I've got an above ground commute. Oh, nice. And nice. then I just like ducked out for a lunch break to watch like the last twenty minutes. But I, yeah, I was definitely spoiled. Dude, drove it right. drives me insane, I hate that. man. I don't. It's not the biggest thing to me because the the like 
you know, the quality of the show and the way that a show actually plays that, no, out I, is really the best thing. Right. But my um, thing is, like, there but, is there some type of race you're trying to win by putting up a status of the show that just ended seconds ago? Right. Yeah. And then, you know... Uh, a person would say, didn't, didn't stay off of social media. I'm like, why? I'm watching this other thing that I want to follow right. too. Like, I right. can't have it both ways. I got to alienate. Right. Uh, it, it's just, it's stupid. Like, Game of Thrones, you really got to, you have to stay away. You have to, point. yeah, you have to, you have to see it when it's going down because people ruin your life. But I yeah. use something on Chrome it's called the Unspoiler. Though. Uh-huh. It's like a good plugin where you just type in all the keywords. Oh, really? The flag and it will... It will flag them and like it'll put a red block. There you and go. Really like this may contain Zach a to the rescue. Yeah. But you'll still see pictures and stuff. I just know, unfollow people, see. don't friend them on Facebook. And, <laughs> and yeah, them I've been I've been to. doing that a lot. Lately, That's just what too. I do. Like, oh yeah, you want you one of those people? All right, right. kid. No birthday shout off for you because I'm there. <laughs> That's all it's good for when I don't talk to you. That's right, funny. Let's man. do because we all agree that the season has been so good. Let's mm-hmm. do some like the best stuff and the mm, stuff that's not so good. Okay. So oh. Daenerys, I mean, a hundred percent. Oh yeah, agreed. Th- that th- scene of the flame was just yeah. ridiculous. That was great to just be like reminded that she's Badass. a fucking superhero, yeah, basically. She, yeah, like it, you forget, you know. But I, I feel like what I love about that character is like early on she was clueless. Yeah. She knew she wanted. She knew she was a queen. She knew she wanted to be the queen. She didn't know how to be the queen. She yeah. didn't know how to lead. She did. Dude, she came up with that plan by herself. You yeah. you saw her growing in. Yeah, her progression, to her, role. her character arc has. I love been that so about good, her. Man. Yeah, yeah. She's never had really uh, too many advisors right. like yeah. pointing her too much. And like Jora has definitely been good, but yeah, she's been calling the shots my, probably more. Yeah, than yeah. and my favorite part there's, there's been times where you've been like, come on, man. Like, are you really like you've been pissed at her because she's been hard headed? Right, exactly. And then there's other times where you feel for her, she's vulnerable, and you're like, damn, right. I just want to see her do what I want her to do. You know, yeah. and that's just great storytelling yeah. from the writers and I guess yeah. George R. R. Martin for writing, you know, that stuff. So, yeah, that's one of my favorite. Um, Agreed. So, we think she's going to take all the Dothraki and like come back to Marine. And she's just yeah. stronger yeah. than to, ever. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. By, right now. By about well, however many tens yeah. of thousands right. more she And you know got. she's going exactly. after the, um, what are they called? The the gold mask people? I always forget the Oh, name. yeah, the Sons of the Harpy. Yeah, Sons yeah. of the Harpy. But they've chilled Such out because of that deal Tyrion made. Nice little yeah, but she seven doesn't, year she plan doesn't know that. Right, out right, right. Right. <laughs> but she doesn't know that. Right. So she could just show up and be like, go seek out anyone in this right. gold mask yeah. and fucking bring me their head on a stake. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. However I, they do. Game of Thrones will a lot of times and like, let's switch to one of the more boring things, which is Arya. Yes! So Game of Thrones will set up for yes! a long time for a good payoff and with Daenerys, it's like, they're just, they are, there's going to be huge payoffs at the end of the yeah. season, but it's been so good. The how, whole right. how many episodes versus Arya. are yeah. we going to watch Arya get her shit pushed in yeah, by this fucking yeah, girl man. with the bow? Just get hit with a stick. Right. For, for you got no out. name. But where's your spine? Yeah. Because they are kicking <laughs> your ass. Yeah. There's been probably at least six episodes in the last two seasons where Arya's only thing was like going on a stupid little mission in Bravos right. and like getting her ass kicked. I've never seen somebody get her ass kicked more in <laughs> like a uh, succession of episodes. Right. Yeah. Like, and I feel like she's in she's in the episodes for maybe 45 seconds. Yeah. And that girl who's whipping her ass is loving every minute. Of yo, that. she's yo. <laughs> These they gotta move it along with Arya. Yeah, they do. Yeah. But, that that's my that's my only gripe yeah with game of thrones mm-hmm. why did it take two episodes for you to resurrect jon snow mm-hmm. we all knew he was going to come back to life yeah. what took so long why do you drag out certain things so long certain things are like oh my god i never saw that coming and certain yeah. things are like could you just do it already yeah, it's tv like, man like yeah. I, they've talked about it like even people who do television shows especially for shows like that don't have commercials like netflix shows and hbo shows right they have to fulfill an amount of episodes but sometimes the story is so tight they have to fill it with stuff right, and they right. even st- they even admit it like they it's you have filler. To filler. Yeah. It's this filler. And it's a shame. Yeah, that's that, a shame. You know, that's where the rest of the stuff comes in. So how about John and Sansa reuniting and then what they're planning to like go hopefully go take back Winterfell? I think that stuff's been great. Yeah, that's that's I think awesome. that's great. I know. Uh that scene with Sansa and fucking Lord Baelish. Yeah. Like, oh, that was great. Dude, yeah. that she like acting wise, um, awesome scene. Cause her intensity and her conviction of like what she went through since he's the one that sent her with fucking bolt with Ramsey. Right. And his like my man is pet. Petrified. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying. Yeah. In case I'm waiting. Patch, but like he like you, he's shaking patch. and he's like backtracking and yeah. that scene is so good. And it's it's finally good to see her yeah. in the position where she's just like yeah. Yo, like I'm not playing the victim anymore. And it's she's like, I'm going to Winterfell, whether you come or not. Or so. not. Here's yeah. my here's my biggest, not fear. But when I saw that storyline unfold, this is what I was concerned about. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is Game of Thrones, and there's some ancestral behavior. Mm-hmm. Now, yes, he is not, you know, her biological brother. Well, half brother, or maybe not at all. No, well, not at all. Maybe not at all. Right. Mm-hmm. I just don't want them to fall in love. <laughs> no, they're not going to fall in love. I don't think those are that. I think John's done loving. Yeah. I think he had the thing with Egret and he's yeah, done. Yeah, and, and, and his... his he's, his, just, his, he's just emo now his, forever. Uh, oh, his love forever interests emo. tend to be dead. <laughs> uh, so that doesn't help. Can but I just like, say... I just saw there was such... Like, that moment was such, like, a possibly romantic kindling moment for me. So I was like, I you just got don't. issues. Yeah, I didn't see that. I just, don't, I just don't want it to happen. Can I just say that whole up, scene Tim. that Arya's watching them recreate her father's beheading? Oh, that was good. That was, dude, that was longer than it had to be. Oh, yeah. Um, I saw a good point on Twitter. It was like, this is the first evidence of media in Westeros. Yeah. That's <laughs> true. Like, That's you know, hysterical. You don't see news going around except for a raven. <laughs> it was very long, yeah. I mean, I, I, I liked it because... I just thought it was a cool character moment for her to have to see that again, mm-hmm. and for her to sure, uh, sure, yeah, try to not be phased by it. And I, maybe she might not have even been phased by it. Let me ask you this because you read the books. Yeah. Um, spoiler: alert, If you haven't know the yeah. this whole hoarder hold the door situation. Yeah. Spoilers: Hoarder's dead. Deal with it. Whatever. <laughs> um, did you know that was coming from the books or no? No, no. You saw a little bit of him as a younger guy, but uh-huh. it, it wasn't this that. And I guess George Martin told them about that one that's one that he uh. did tell them that this was the connection but man that was so cool because it wasn't just like oh he's hold her because he was saying hold the door it was like just future and uh past and present like mm-hmm. combined influencing each other was some really like get your head in like a back to the oh, future yeah. loop sort of thing absolutely it was cool but it made sense and it wasn't like well she was hurting it. it totally made sense yeah a lot of people were hurt that they killed off hoarder yeah i really wasn't phased much by i love the character but I really wasn't attached to him to yeah. be. Um, I kind of attributed more. Like, remember in um, in Walking Dead when they killed Beth off? Mm-hmm. Again, wasn't attached to that character. Really didn't care that she mm-hmm. got killed off. I felt the same in this one. People are like, "How could you? Like, it's order." And I'm just like, "Yeah." They yeah. killed the dire wolf though, too, man. That those dire wolves that are, hurt you more. That hurt me more. Yeah. I knew it. It was bad. We learned a lot about you on this podcast. Pandas and and dire wolves <laughs> are Juan's spirit animals. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, the dire wolf. But because you know the dire wolf has been have been with each kid yeah. since they were you know yeah, little yeah. cubs. Yeah, puppies. Yeah. What do you totally. call a wolf? Wolf yeah. cub, right? Pup. Yes. Wolf pup. Wolf pup. Wolf pups. Let's go with pup. That's I why know I was that from, from mini the wolf. Jungle Book. Mini wolf. Uh, uh, so what, let's talk about what we hope happens or like what we want to see really quickly. But I will also have to say, like as a book reader, and I I feel so bad because I hyped this up to people. This the King's Moot thing on the Iron Islands where they're gonna choose who their next, mm. uh, I guess, king for them is gonna be. It was it was nothing in the show, yeah. and it was one of the best best scenes of the books. It's in the fourth book. It's definitely the best part of that book, and it's just wow. it was unbelievable. And there's a whole other brother who's part of it who comes in, and uh, they're like these real badass, like pirate Viking kind of guys. And pff, it was just nothing on the show. I was so disappointed. Yeah, I don't know why they're doing the Iron Islands or Dorne or even King's Landing. Like yeah. they have to do King's Landing, but of course, what significant is happening there? Like that place is gonna get flattened, and <laughs> everybody uh, there is just like. King's They're Landing. Nobody. Ugh. Yeah, we haven't heard anything from Dorn for like two or three episodes, right? No, since, since the first episode. Yeah. So, but hey, better than to keep checking in with something that yeah. isn't gonna. Yeah. Before so, I forget, did you see somebody putting Martin from Black Knight into no. the trailer for? Oh Game of Thrones? no, I heard about that, dude. Whoever did that, whoever Gross. did that, you are fucking. They did it well. It's funny. 
Oh, dude, they, they they re you know they re filtered the old footage mm-hmm. to uh, to fit the Game of Thor- Thrones like color palette mm-hmm. and even like snow shavings like cr- you know how like in a lot of the scenes in Game of Thrones was like snow falling or whatever they added that effect like dude, it looks like he's in those scenes and the scenes they chose him to put him in like, it was it's so well done and it's hilarious like if you haven't watched that please watch that it's funny go find it all right one thing that you want to see that you want to know more about that you hope happens. Um, I just like to see Khaleesi and her dragons, yo. Yeah, let's get I those need other more two dragons. dragons out. Yeah, that's what I want. I mean, they're free. I want to see them <laughs> t- p- pillage and, they're and destroy. They're not free the yet. Term. They're still locked up. Yeah, they're mean? off they're the not. chain, they're but down the chain. in the basement. Yeah. They're still in the in the. Pyramid. It's like you're still a prisoner, but you're right. free to yeah. move around the cabin. Yeah. Oh, that's whack. I thought they were out in nah, the boot. Out. Out. All out in the boot. No. Yeah. No? You would remember. If they get out, there's it's going to be a yeah. big scene. Damn it. Yeah. Well, I want to see that. In the yeah, near absolutely. It's got to be some good dragon stuff. Um, I want to see the Head Sparrow get his comeuppance because I'm oh, fucking yeah. tired of that dude. And Something's happening this week. Something's happening this week. I'm just tired of like him. and. Oh, he's. If you know me, like that makes sense why I'm just tired of that shit. Um, it's funny because I don't have a problem with that, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I want to see what's gonna happen. I went to fell with Bolt with Ramsey versus John and Sansa, oh, yeah, the Wildlings. Yeah. Warner Fell's definitely. And when that good. giant hits them, and they don't know that giant's yeah. coming, cat. Yeah, <laughs> problems. <laughs> when that giant comes, I can't wait. That that battle is something I'm looking forward to. More White Walker stuff. Got to mm. see it. There was yeah. a there was a when little bit though. this week. There there's a little <laughs> bit this week. You're gonna see when you catch up. It's a. Uh, it was significant, but it was also a tease. It was also the beginning of something they got to mm. give you more of. But, yeah. All right. Yeah, man. Juan, Apocalypse. Yes, X-Men Apocalypse comes out this Friday, the 27th. I saw it last Wednesday. Couldn't talk about it for a couple of weeks because that's just how, yeah. you know, that's how we roll. The confidentiality um, agreements. I very much enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Um, it very, a lot darker than I thought it was going to be. You know, good amount of blood, some gore here and there. Wow. Not explicit where they hold it for like a couple of seconds, but enough where you're like, oh, wow, I don't expect this movie to have right. this in it. Um, as far as, you know, they deviate from the comics as most movies should because you don't want to make it too predictable. Um, I, Everyone's display of their abilities was done very well, especially with Nightcrawler. And I think Psylocke stood out with how they did their stuff. But Quicksilver, man, like his, he has a scene where he just steals the show again. From the last, you seen the last one, right? No, no. That's what I know what I'm talking about. Dude, the time in a bottle scene is one of my favorite movie moments. Yeah. Period. Wow. In Days yeah. of Future Past, because you know Quicksilver is faster than like, uh-huh. and, you know, but when he's running fast, everything is just in slow motion. Yeah. And in this one, he does like he has like ten a ten minute scene of him. Doing something like really fuck. I don't want to give too much away of, right. the, of him doing his thing, mm-hmm. and it's so good. All right, it's so good. Like for that alone, you should go see the movie. How did this one compare to the previous two that they made? Uh, it's up there, man. It's okay. it's definitely one of my favorites. Um, nice. Yeah. Uh, the only you know me the only peeves I had, they all had to do with apocalypse. All right. And that's just because I'm picky and nerdy. Right. Right. And the '90s X-Men cartoon is one of my favorite things mm-hmm. ever, um, and I and the comics too. Just I'm just used to a certain way Apocalypse looks like. Yeah, and he doesn't look. And like he that. doesn't look like it. They tried in some aspects, and in others they didn't. Um, having said that, though, Oscar Isaac's is great because he's just talented as shit. Right. I was going to say, could you tell it's him in any way? No, I mean, just not really. Like if vocally. you if I didn't tell you it was <laughs> him, you wouldn't know it was him. But he does a great job in delivering lines. Right. There's just you know nitpicky stuff. I just wish he was a little. They made him look a little taller in stature because there's parts where he's in a full shot with his other minions and he's as tall. And it's like your apocalypse. I feel like you should be at least like hmm. eight feet tall. You know right. what I mean? Because you're this power. Like you're the end all be all. Mutant, right. You shouldn't you know be I mean? normal size. Yeah. So like stuff like that. But it wasn't bad enough for like it didn't hold weight for me to be like yeah this movie. Now like was, some critics did. Was there like a clear cut moment in the film where you were like they're about to make a full feature on this character? I remember we were talking about Jubilee. Her she wasn't really in it, yeah. but she was. Yeah. Um, yeah. The cast came in today: Evan Peters, um, Lana. Her last name escapes me. Who played Luke Jubilee and the 
the girl who plays Storm and um, they all do their thing. That's one mm-hmm. thing they do really well that they all display their powers. Some of them, like I wish we would have got a little bit more of some characters, but there was nobody where you're like, oh, they're making a movie for this person. Mm, not even Quicksilver though. Nah, he has he had he sh- he flourishes. He has his great scenes, right? But not where it's like, oh, like no, not really. Um, there's some scenes in there that are just incredible. If especially if you're like a nerd, um, I don't want to give it away because you know people will read into it. Right. Um, but yeah, I I suggest if you're a fan of X Men the series, you should go see it. If you're a casual fan, I think right. you should go see it because it's not it's not too meta. Like you don't have to be in that world to enjoy it. I don't think. Is no. this the end of superhero mania till Suicide Squad? Yes. All right. Till August. All right. All right, so we're going to start this new thing, right? And I'm just freestyling right now, so just follow me. sure are. Okay? Because Juan is reviewing things, (laughs) because on on the social medias he is Juan con queso, how many slices of the queso are you giving this movie? I give it... You can only give it five slices. five, Five being a whole piece of queso. Right. I give it... I give it like four and a half. Wow. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I, the stuff I didn't like was me nitpicking, you know, Apocalypse and stuff. All right. There's just a lot of stuff in it that they did very well, and I went into it not with low expectations, but with stuff I had read of people complaining about it and right. why they didn't think it was good. And then when I saw it, I was like, none of the stuff I read really held any bearing of why I should dislike this All movie. Right. Um, I, it's not the perfect movie by any means, but me as a fan of X-Men and of comics i enjoyed it a lot i give it a four and a half all right maybe like a four and a quarter i guess just because the apocalypse stuff and like little stuff here and there that just didn't fall in line to what i'm used to with right. storytelling um but i think it's a solid solid movie and it's one of the best in the x-men franchise for all sure right. keep those slices ready for next yeah time. man yeah man <laughs> gotta get them slices not talk about Word. all right so this weekend i'll kick it off hit it i'm Listening to the same stuff I was listening to last weekend, the Chance the Rapper and the Corinne Bailey Ray. I love both these nice. albums so much. Good, good, good. Um, and also, one of my old favorite bands, Thrice, is coming back. Um, gonna be listening to their album. They're a really cool, inventive rock band. Dope. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna try to listen to Chance the Rapper. I didn't get to do it last weekend. What the hell were you doing? You know, that's a very good question. <laughs> All right, well, it must have been a good weekend if you don't remember it. That's a very good <laughs> you know what? No, but it, every time I try to put it on in the car, my kid just wasn't having it. What? Yeah, and we this went, is a good family rap album, some of it. Yeah, she Like was, a good half of it. She's getting least. to like where she feels like I'm chauffeuring her around. So right. if she's in the car, I have to put what she likes. Right. That's where she's at. That's that daughter I get life. the divide. Yeah. I get the, I'll go, I always have my show on shuffle, so I play something. No, daddy, next one. And I'm like, but. All right, next one. And then it's something she likes. Leave it. And then... <laughs> there you go. That's where I'm at. No, she but I definitely want some nice. time. I've heard a couple of tracks on there. Um, but yeah, I, I need to like get deep, deep, deep in it. So yeah. hopefully this weekend is the week. All right, those first two tracks will really boost you. Yeah. I so. did listen to Radiohead, though, last weekend. Yeah. I got a chance to do that. And I, I enjoyed it. Cool. So Yeah, this week, hopefully I get some good, good time with Chance. All right. Listen, man, I've been listening for the last three weeks. Even though I've been saying that I'm going to listen to other things, uh-huh. I've been listening to Konnichiwa. Yeah. Konnichiwa. And that's all I'm going to listen to. Right. I'm not going to fight it anymore. Yeah. Like, I've, I've listened to other things. Tell them what Konnichiwa things. is in case they don't know. Okay, so so there's, there's, this, there's this MC from London in it, and his name is Skepta. And he's finally dropped a proper album finding his sound, mm-hmm. finding his voice. And um, it's a great project. It's a great project. Some of the ASAP Mob is featured on it. Um, him and Drake are super, super tight. Uh, Shut down All it. of this mons, mons, this and that that Drake is saying, he's getting that from Skepta. Yeah. Like, you know, that's kind of, you know, been... Um, they, he's been very influential on Drake in that way but mm-hmm. his album is really dope it's a good enough blend of grime and hip hop mm-hmm. that it's not annoying a hundred and some beat per minute like uh-huh. just rapid fire okay that's what I was worried about no it's 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 
It's UK rap. It's right. not grime, in my opinion. Obviously, right. this, they they'll consider it grime, but lyrically, it's great. The the production is great. Subject matter is great. And if you're looking just for kind of a departure, with still that hip hop vibe, then go listen to Konichiwa. I mean, it's been out for three weeks now. It was the number one album in the UK. He's an independent artist. Yeah. It was like such a celebratory moment for him. Um, that's big though. If you've been playing it that long, I now, have not that's stopped. Good. I'm gonna Konichi wind it up, and right. it's a good listen. Like I don't really, I don't skip anything. Nice. So it's it's dope. So. All right. And you're definitely gonna get hip to some new lingo that they use oh, in the London, which slang is the, <laughs> the slang is the so great. The slang is so great, man. All I right. love it, bro. So, yeah, you might you might need some, you know, you might you might need a translator at times, but you'll get the context clues. But it's right. pretty dope. Konichi wa. Where right. can people find us? Well, I am really nowhere to be found. You off the grid? But when I do, no, I'm joking. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Esteban Serrano. I'm at Juan Con Queso with a Z on Twitter. And I'm Zach Dion. And what can you, iTunes, everything? Yeah, subscribe on iTunes. Uh, We're on Stitcher, we found out. Uh We're on Stitcher, we're on iTunes, we're on Fuse.tv. Rate, subscribe, leave a comment, you know. Back Listen, in class hashtag. Reach out to us, man. Yeah. People have been yeah. reaching out to us. It's yeah. been awesome. Yeah. You know, it's been good, cool interacting with people. People want to send us send us stuff. Yeah. That'd be great. Tell us what you yeah, what you think about Tell what we what talked about, what you want to hear us talk about. And then listen or, to the other Fuse podcasts. K stop yeah, man. and pop chat. K stop won't stop. K stop won't <laughs> stop. Neither will pop chat. Till next week. Peace. Adios. Peace.